There is much to be learned from people who have lived on this land much longer than we have. A knowledge that manifests itself not only in their relationships with nature, their songs and epics, their technology and creations, but in their very survival. Only by being aware of this heritage of the indigenous can we find not only our roots, but our direction. Their pride and ours, captured in one word, Dayao. In an age of increasing globalization, we Filipinos are constantly reminded to look back to the vast stores of indigenous knowledge that, like our own natural resources, are in danger of being forever lost. We have much to learn from our indigenous peoples, vast stores of knowledge, technologies, and ways of life that guaranteed not only survival, but a distinct identity. Lupa, Karagatan, Kagubatan, an environment that inspired their indigenous peoples to make the best use of resources while guaranteeing a precious balance, a balance where we are so in danger of losing today. Grand to look at, astounding to behold. challenging to understand. The Ifugao rice terraces represent a dynamic indigenous response to the environment. One that combines hard work and tenacious industry with a deep understanding of how our forests watersheds, mountainous terrain, and engineering can come together to guarantee a people's survival. The age of these terraces is much debated. Some scholars have said that these marvels are two or three thousand years old. Recent archaeological evidence points to a much later dating and posits that these terraces were built by the lowland ancestors of the Ifugaos who were fleeing the Spanish colonizers. But whether they are 3,000 or 300 years old, what is most astounding is that the Ifugao have carved from the Gran Cordillera mountain range an entire system capable of supporting life, sustaining natural resources, and enhancing a vibrant culture. While we see tourist attractions, the Ifugao see their very survival and the environment that must be harnessed sustainably. In Kinakin, a village not normally on the tourist route, we learn the ways in which these payo, the terrace fields, are a result of a complex system of knowledge that has served the Ifugao well. Itong rice terraces na ito, we called it uh, chape, rice terraces. It's a part of uh, the study of Hall of Conquin, based in Bayninan, isang uh, sityo ng uh, kinakin. Doon nag si Conquin, pinag-araran yung culture, rice field, ng mga tao doon sa Bayninan sityo. I think yung uh, pangalan na ito, Chape means uh, parang nag slow na terraces. If you could see yung uh, akyat, katapos yung creek, nakadirect yung irrigation sa terraces. Pagkita natin, no angles dito sa Chape, rice terraces. Ito ang pinaka-base, among the base of the terraces in Kinakin, sa barangay Kinakin. The Ifgao system of terracing begins first with irrigation. Uh, itong mga tubig mam galing sa mga forest namin, sa communal at sa private uh, forest. Doon galing yung mga tubig na nakikita natin. 
Pagkatapos, uh, minimaintain namin din yung mga forest uh, areas. Meron tayong uh, kanal na ginagawa. At saka yung mga ito, yung direct na galing sa creek, maggagawa tayo ng uh, harang patapos pupunta yung uh, tubig sa rice field. Uh, galing doon sa taas, yung uh, uh, forested area. Pagkatapos dito naman sa baba, meron uh, private uh, forest pero protected. Tanim namin na uh, kahoy para meron tayong uh, supply ng water sa rice fields natin. True gravity kasi from the taas, tapos pababa. Initially, galing sila sa creek. Pagkatapos, uh, dinanagyan ng uh, maliit na irigasyon papunta sa rice paddies. The watersheds that feed the payo do so with nothing simpler or more durable than bamboo tubes or roughly hewn cairns. The Ifugao have worked out traditional systems of social sharing in which the precious water is distributed equally among families. The hardest work goes into building and maintaining these terraces. No matter how sturdy they may look, a storm, a sudden surge of too much water, can cause the walls to collapse. And with nothing more than simple tools and muscle, the walls must be rebuilt again, the water distribution systems restored. Then the hard work of creating and maintaining the stone walls begins. Yung ibang stone walls na abutan namin, pero yung kadalasan na nakikita natin, yung nagre-repair na. Yung halimbawa, nasira na stone wall, eh, pinirepair namin. Bago mag-start ng cultivation ng uh, rice field, yan na, inumpisa na yung stone rolling. May da time na, na ayos na yung stone rolling na umakit na dito, yan na, taniman na, pati yung na-erod kasama sa ano, tinataniman na. Ito yung mga natutunan namin sa mga ninuno namin, mga parents namin. Kasi palagi, alam mo yung uh, hanap buhay namin dito, eh, uh, taniman lang na ganito. Kahit uh, once a year, pero tinuturo sa amin paano mag-alaga, pag, uh, paano mag, uh, magtanim ng uh, palay. Ito, ma'am, yung uh, sinasabi natin na foundation. Sabi namin dito sa Ipugaw, Gopnad. Kung nakikita natin, malalaki yung dito sa baba, followed by yung medyo malilit ng konti, hanggang akyat dito sa taas. Kailangan pag uh, patas, patas din yung pare-parehas yung ano, pare-pareho nung uh, stone rolling. Uh, walang semento na ginagamit namin dito, yung soil, yung lupa na pagdikit sa bawat stone wall, bato. So important are the terraces that the matter of inheritance must always be settled beforehand to avoid division in the family. Just after marriage, uh, tinuro sa amin yung palayan mo, rice field mo, ito sa iyo. Ituturo yung uh, boundaries or ilan padis, ilan uh, area ng uh, rice field. Yung uh, partidos ng asawa mo, sila na ang mag-aani at sauce na ibigay sa inyo. Yung ani, pagkatapos, yun din ang sasabihin namin sa mga anak namin. Na ito rin yung uh, ina-inherit namin sa magulang namin, ito rin para sa inyo. Sinabi ko sa mga anak ko, I'm encouraging them na uh, dapat alam nilang magtanim, mag-alaga ng rice field. Kasi yun yung uh, dito galing yung uh, supply natin sa rice. I find it a great irony that the Philippines now has to import rice when the Ifugaos mastered such rugged terrain to be able to produce it. Of course, times have changed and populations have grown dramatically. But what do we stand to lose by carefully looking at how the Ifugaos worked the mountains? Not to change them, but to make the best of what nature had challenged them with.
all over the Cordillera region, our indigenous peoples have developed their own ingenious and innovative methods of land use that are both respectful and creative. Terracing is not exclusive to the Ifogao. Other indigenous groups have also developed their own forms of terracing. Whether on gentle slopes or high plateaus, the terraces of the Cordillera are studies in natural form dictating function and purpose. Along with such adaptation come belief systems, architecture, ritual, and custom. In such animist societies as the Ifugao, Nature, its spirits, its features, its rhythms, and cycles are what shape the way they live, believe, and commune with the deities and with one another. From the mountains to the seas and to the adventure of one very modern man who looked at and experienced for himself the ways in which the Sama Dilaut of Sulu mastered the seas. In an archipelago such as ours, why do many of us know so little about the boat building techniques that allowed our ancestors to travel, trade, and even live on the waters surrounding our islands? For generations, the master boatman or Tukang of Sulu, specifically Sibutu Island, have been turning out boats known for their speed, lightness, ability to ride the waves. The Kumpit, Kampuan, Sapit, and Birabira are only four of the variants of the boat form that the Sibutu masters are expert in building. With such vessels as these, the traders of Sulu traversed the waters of Holo, reaching as far as Borneo, Malaysia, and Brunei. The secret of these boats is a hull designed to ride the waves. The main body is constructed from planks that the Tukang constructs, not from paper plants, but from his own combination of practical know-how and memory. The body of the boat, with its streamlined hull, is constructed from logs first, before the rib framework or gusok is put in. This simple, elegant form was designed to be powered by the wind, but it is so versatile, it can be adapted to motor and diesel engine. A testament to a technology that is as old as a balanghais, and yet, as current as any yacht. One man chose to experience this technology for himself and it was the adventure of his life. Well actually it started after coming down from Mount Everest. We thought what's next? Why not build the boat that our forefathers used in their waves of migration in as authentic as possible. What happened then was that I went here at the National Museum, talked to the archaeological section, and asked for advice. And they said that this is how the boat was built. They gave me a handbook of Father Alcina, the Jesuit maritime priest during Spanish time. And I looked at it and I said, who can build this boat? He said, no one now among the people, except if you go to Batanes, the Ibatans built the same kind of boat or you go to Tawi-Tawi, the Sama Delaya, they built, they still built that kind of boat. So I went to Tawi-Tawi and look at how they built the boats and that's how it started. Displayed in one of the courtyards of the National Museum is the very boat that Art Valdez commissioned from the Sama de Laot. He encouraged them to use all their knowledge in constructing this one boat in as traditional a manner as possible. 
Then I saw that it's still the traditional way of boat building, shell first construction. If you have noticed the modern boat building is that once the keel is set, they put up the ribs and then the walls or the sidings. But the shell first construction is that you have the keel and then you build planks. You built a shell of this kind. And then the ribs is the last part that you put it together. So I went out and did research and I asked the National Museum that I can build an authentic balangay based from the diggings in Butuan. And that's how the boat was built. Valdez experienced for himself just how effective this method of building was. And he was amazed to find out that the master builders could calculate and design based purely on experience and memory. But I was not content enough because uh, I'd like to ensure that the boat is really fit to travel in open seas. So while they're building the boat, I also asked the Society of Naval Architects and uh, Maritime Engineers that the boat we're building is also technology-wise, based on science, is really fit to sail on open seas and even oceans at that. And uh, they made a hydrostatic study on the performance of the boat because I asked the master builder, Asama Delaya, what is the draft? How deep is the water for this boat to float? At two feet of water, it will float. And then I asked the naval architects, what is the result of your hydrostatic uh, uh, study of the boat? And they said that, sir, at 18 inches, your boat will float. Science has confirmed their technical capability to build that kind of boat. In a courtyard of the National Museum, Art Valdez's boat sits far away from the rough seas it has journeyed on. Eighteen men accompanied him, his friends from the Mount Everest team, Coast Guard and the Navy. But the most indispensable were the Sama boat builders themselves. Especially at the time when the seas become so rough, and they have to tell me, Sir, we can't do that. Sir, don't go there, so we'll go to the Isla of Pagtaguan. They are quite familiar with uh, the performance of the boat, kung kaya talaga namin yung sobrang laki ng alon. The boat is powered by the wind and steered by the stars. Celestial navigation. That's how it was. And we try to be as faithful as possible, the way our forefathers said. This has been handed from generation to generation. That would explain why, that indeed we're, we're really a maritime people. The mountains, the seas, both are equally demanding environments, yet the Ifugaos of the Cordilleras and the Sama Dilaot of Sulu have mastered these environments. Or is mastered really the right word? Do they simply and over time study their environments and make the best of what they had without really trying to conquer anything? What other knowledge systems were born out of a respect for the environment? And what treasures of our intangible heritage did they yield? The environment as a source of music and art. But of course, among the Palawenos, the forests and skies over their mountain homes are inspiration for their unique music. A music that echoes the very songs of the birds and the wind. The people of Palawan have no monumental structures of architecture, agriculture, or technology. The people of Palawan have a very fine artistic tradition of mat and basket weaving, considered the most colorful and intricate in the country. Their tinkop baskets are masterpieces of delicate, painstaking, skillful art and they can be proud of a unique form of intangible heritage, a language of music that is a direct response to nature. It was the renowned anthropologist Nicole Revel who studied the ways of life of the semi-nomadic Palawan. Her studies revealed the unique musicology that was inspired by and responded 
to the sounds of the sheltering forests. In this rare footage, the late Gawad Manilikhanang Bayan or Gamaba awardee Masino Intaray demonstrates the complex rhythm patterns etched out on the simplest of instruments. There are so many things that we can learn from the animist groups. One of the most important is that the animists, that's why they're called animists, believe that everything is animated by the life principle. That means everything is alive. Rocks, water, earth, fire, all of these are alive, especially trees. The moment you believe that trees, mountains have spirits, you'll be afraid to destroy. You'll be afraid to log forests for just for timber because there are beings inside them. Once you lose uh, the idea that uh, nature has spirits, then you will no longer respect nature. When we see what we have done to our forests, our coastlines, our mountains, we don't just see crimes against the environment. By destroying these, we have also taken away from our indigenous peoples, their sources of life, their identities, the very sounds of nature that inspires art as complex as any way we can create. A collage of images and connections. That is how we've envisioned Dayao, a mountain range in its terraces, the sea and the vessels that ride its waves, a forest and the music that both nature and man create. All we show how our indigenous peoples and different environments all over the archipelago have developed not only survival skills and technologies, but a vital art as well, a true source of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. <laughs>